welcome to our jam-packed end-of-season highlights video of Charlton's 93-94 campaign. Over the next two hours, we'll have coverage of all Charlton's home and away games as we take you through the highs and lows of the Addicts season. Plus, we'll have interviews with the men who made the news in 93-94, and we'll also be bringing you combination action from the Charlton Reserve team. There's also the chance to win a terrific prize in our ever-popular Charlton Trivia Quiz. Just jot down the answers to the five easy questions scattered throughout this program and send them on a postcard to Trivia Competition, care of Steve Dixon, at the usual club address. All entries should reach us by the end of August 1994. The Addicts began their campaign in confident mood, having previously beaten mighty Arsenal 2-1 in a pre-season friendly. New faces in the Charlton squad this year included keeper John Vaughan and his Cambridge teammate Phil Chappell, while defender Alan McCleary had signed from Millwall on a free transfer. With Birmingham City the visitors for the first game of the season, our commentator at the Valley is Steve Dixon. So it'll be Walsh with a free kick and Minto's made a run. And Minto's in here on the left-hand side, he's got the cross in and at the far post, it's Phil Chappell! And on his debut, Phil Chappell has scored for Charlton. It's Charlton Athletic 1, Birmingham City 0. After 37 minutes, Scott Minto got down the left from a quick free kick by Walsh. He swung the ball in and arriving at the far post for a super header, a towering header, it's Phil Chappell to make it 1-0. That's bounced unfortunately, and now Robinson's in for Charlton. Robinson one on one, he's cut inside the defender with the shots and saved by Miller. And Robinson came close there to making it two for Charlton, but the danger's not cleared yet. Now Pitcher with a chance, and it's over. The final score Charlton Athletic one, Birmingham City nil. Our reporter Bill Anderson put it to Phil Chappell that he couldn't have wished for a better Charlton debut. No, it was uh, eventful to say the least. Uh, I think it did my eye in about the second minute or something, and uh, uh, it didn't. Uh, it didn't stop there either. Obviously, we were scoring the goal. Yeah, could you could you uh, tell me what happened? Um, what I remember, there was a free kick, and uh, I think Walshy and Scott Minto took it short. Um, Scott put a great ball in. I just happened to be time to run on the end of the ball. It was uh, as simple as that, really. A great ball from Scott. Are you pleased to have come to Charlton? Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a higher standard of football, it's a standard that I was playing in last year, so um, obviously that's, that's, uh, that's a plus. It's a bigger club, um, just hope I you know, settle in uh, as well as I did do first game. Or, you know, the lads have been great, um, just hope it goes on from here. Three days later, the Addicts were at Fratton Park to take on Portsmouth. Floats it across, Lee Burns in a low header. Chamberlain have to get to that, Walsh right across the goal. It's in, it's a goal for Charlton Athletic. The ball came across low. The defenders unable to pick up. Winter. Lieber, look how deep he's come to collect that ball. Garland, Charlton working well now. Darren Pitcher makes the break. A beautiful ball through to Gary Nelson. Sean Newton calls for it. Flicks it over with his left foot. Walsh is there. 21, number 21. Colin Walsh has taken that ball and placed it past Alan Knight. There was no real power on the shot, but the ball seemed to loop off a foot into the far corner. Stimson. Long ball for Chamberlain. Warren Neal, a neat overhead kick. Handball, spotted by the linesman. Warren Neal claims the handball. Scott Minto is booked for protesting too much to the linesman. And now, Kit Simons take this all-important penalty for Pompey, and he scores! The score of the final whistle, Portsmouth 1, Charlton Athletic 2.
The following Saturday, Charlton travelled to Roker Park for the away game with Sunderland. The match took a controversial turn ten minutes after the break when the ref allowed Don Goodman's goal for Sunderland, despite the linesman's flag for offside. Goodman added insult to injury ten minutes later, setting up teammate Michael Gray with this golden opportunity. With eight minutes to go, the Addicts found themselves 3-0 down after Gray laid on the shot for Sean Cunnington to score. Gordon Armstrong completed the Addicts' misery in the 85th minute, putting the ball past a hapless Nick Sam. To leave the final score, Sunderland 4, Charlton Athletic 0. However, this devastating defeat proved to be just a blip in the Addicts' game plan, as the side entertained Tranmere Rovers on the 24th of August. Here's our commentator, John Fuller. It's Melkin, and McCleary intercepts. Quickly pushes Nelson away, Nelson flicks on. Hasn't got anyone in front of him. Oh, this could be a mistake here, this could be the first goal, it's there, yes! That's it! 16 minutes gone, mistake from Eric Nixon, the ball clears straight to the feet of Sean Newton. Looks up, sees the empty goal, and calmly chips the goalkeeper in the fullback, 1-0. Stevens gives it straight away to Nelson. Newton. Chipping it in, there's Lee Byrne there. Yes, oh, that's unlucky. Peter Garland driving it to the deflection. Just have to check and come back. Just looking for Lee Byrne. And Darren Pitcher winning it. Sean Newton's there. Looking for a quick chip in, Lee Byrne's there. Yes, yes, he's got it on the second. Off the post, Kane's back out. Lee Byrne kept his composure. Pull it away. Yeah. Nelson had to be kicked from behind. Oh, the referee said play on. Oh, that's a foul. That is a penalty. Definitely a penalty. Robinson had rounded his man successfully. Number six, Steve Vickers, running all over his back. Referee in the right position, no hesitation. It becomes, yes, it's there. Three nil. Fifty-six minutes gone, and the hard work of the first half is paying off now in the second. Martin Dell with a free kick. But Nevin just to his left for a short one, chipping it in. This is Aldridge, and Aldridge finds the back of the net. The score at the final whistle, Charlton Athletic 3, Tranmere Rovers 1. Four days later, the Addicts were at the Valley once again, hosting First Division newcomers, Bolton Wanderers. Left foot, curls it in, back post. There's Lee Burns up there, yes. It's going in, no, it's off the line. Carl Lee Burn, his first major shot on goal, cleared off the line, was still there, this is Newton. And three players around the Bolton defence clearing. Brannigan back under pressure, he's not cleared too far. Nelson's still offside at the moment, got away from the comeback, he's back on side. It's well held up by Peter Garland, his pitcher. Lee Byrne looking for the ball. And that went nowhere. Garland wins it back to Walsh, gonna get it on this left foot. Looking for a drive, 
And he's there. Yes, he's there. It's there. Colin Walsh, left foot, moved across the edge of the box, teed it up well. Back of the net. Ten minutes gone. Charlton take the lead. It always looked possible as Walsh cut in across on his favourite left foot and drove it in back of the net. Oh, Grant keeping one eye on the ball at a time there. Stop the ball from reaching Jimmy Phillips' feet. Nelson's on side. He's being pushed. The referee is flanking play on. Nelson's round. He's there. That was well played, well seen by the referee. The linesman was flagging for a foul. The referee said play on. Nelson kept his feet, rounded the goalkeeper and put the ball away. Lee Byrne gets the ball into, into Nelson's Robinson. Chandra Le Bill, going to change sides, going to move across the pitch. He's going to come down the right-hand side. Got Grant inside him. John Robinson's out wide. It's Lee Byrne. And he finds Garland. Garland's got a right-foot drive. Yes, what a goal! What a goal! Peter Garland. Again, they, they said they switched the ball from side to side. And just like in the first half, a bit of a long-range shot. Flanagan was easily beaten. Top of his left-hand cut post. John Fuller asked Peter Garland to talk us through his cracking goal against the Trotters. What a wonderful goal to open your account up with this season. Yeah, not bad goal. <laughs> Looked very nice, made some space for yourself, caught it just right outside the box in the top left-hand corner. Yeah, things weren't going right for me, so I got the ball to it in and thought just whack this one and it went in. <laughs> it seems over the last few games you, John Robinson, Newton really matched in well together, young enthusiastic and battling away and that's what seems to be doing well for Charlton at the moment. Oh yeah, we're working hard as a team and you know, we've got to win our own games, we're winning them so let's hope we can just take it from there, go on. The team must be really pleased, six goals in two games. Yeah, it's good, nice for the crowd to get them goals and all so let's hope we get some more. On the 1st of September, Charlton had their first cup action of the season, playing away to Millwall in the Anglo-Italian. The Lions took the lead in the 12th minute when Andy Roberts converted Ian Dawes cross to put the home side ahead. Eight minutes later, things were looking bleak for the Addicts as Etienne Vivier notched up Millwall's second goal of the evening. Charlton clawed their way back into the game a minute before half-time after Carl Lieben capitalised on Casey Keller's misfortune. Kim Grant completed the Addicts' comeback in the 76th minute, scoring a wonder goal to leave the final result 2-2. Back with the Ensley League, on the 4th of September, Charlton were at Vicarage Road to take on Watford. nil after just two minutes but Kerbishley's appearance on the bench and a disallowed goal midway through the first half 
was an indication of Charlton's growing anxiety. And two minutes before half-time, Alan McCleary put a foot wrong for the first time this season and Gary Porter didn't let him get away with it. In the second half, the view from the bench was much the same, with Watford, who'd won their three previous games, seeing more of the ball and looking the more likely. But under Grit and Kerbishley, Charlton can counter-attack. And against the run of play, and with a bit of help from a hesitant defence, Scott Minto put them back in front. They hadn't played well, and it's to Watford's credit that they weren't allowed to pinch the points. In the final minutes, Watford was sharper, and Alex Inglethorpe made it 2-2. But Charlton looked on it as a point gained, and while most don't expect them to be up there at the finish, no management team will work harder this season, and for now, the double act are top of the league. The following Tuesday, Charlton were hosting old rivals Crystal Palace in the Anglo-Italian Cup. Walsh swings the ball in. Nelson got up there. Grant gets it back in. Lee Burns in, and now a chance! And a chance, and a goal! And what an extraordinary situation. Charlton have taken the lead with 57 seconds gone the Palace defenders are looking round in, in utter amazement in fact the referee certainly ran straight back to the centre spot Stuart Barmer is the man that scored the Palace defenders stood and watched as the ball sprang free from Nigel Martin's grasp and Stuart Barmer will surely never score an easier goal Grant wins the ball well Nelson takes over Grant for Charlton Pitcher. It'll run now for Pardew. Walsh and Sturgis if he can find him. Pardew, again, good first time football from Charlton. Pardew gets it back from Sturgis. Time to look up now. Pardew back to Phil Chapel. Chapel drives it forward, looking for Leeburn. Leeburn gets the touch off, and now there goes Colin Walsh if he can get the shots. He can! It's 2 0. Colin Walsh, the Charlton captain, makes it 2. 34 minutes gone, Charlton Athletic 2, Crystal Palace 0, and again, lovely measured football from Charlton. Seven minutes to go in this first half. Charlton Athletic 2, Crystal Palace 0 in this preliminary round of the Anglo-Italian Cup, but if it stays that way, it means that Millwall have got to win at Selhurst Park next week by a significantly larger margin than the one that Charlton are winning by tonight to progress. But now a chance for O'Connor. Good save by Savant, but that will be a goal. The ball goes in, and it's Paul Williams. It looked like an elbow there. And there seems to be... Oh, and that's a foul. And there's a fight started on the far side there. And Armstrong involved, and he's been looking for trouble. And he's off, and he can't have any complaints whatsoever. Peter Garland to Nelson, and now Charlton have men spare. One of them is Walsh, Sturgis making tracks on that far side. Pardew leaves it, this is Pitcher. Kim Grant, the man on this near side of the field. Pitcher once again. Garland, Grant. Oh, and Garland running on. Peter Garland, can he find a shot on his left foot? Oh, fine goal! Peter Garland with an absolute peach. It's 3-1 to Charlton, and that's the best goal of the game, without a shadow of a doubt. Again, excellent passing football from Charlton. They must have strung together 10 or 11 passes. Pitcher and Grant, Walsh, Nelson all involved, and Peter Garland side through the Palace defence like a knife through butter and beat Nigel Martin with a vicious low left foot drive. It's Charlton Athletic 3, Crystal Palace 1. It's a good ball into the box looking for Williams. Williams has got in there first. Oh, it's off the line! What an amazing clearance! What an absolutely extraordinary clearance from, from Darren Pitcher. Well, Williams was in, and the ball was in the air, and it looked as if the ball was in the net. Kim Grant giving chase, David White slips, Barmer takes over, Grant, Gorman in space, Gorman finding Pitcher on the overlap, now can Darren Pitcher get the cross in, he's got to the ball, he's got the cross in the far post, there's Lieburn, yes, 4-1, classic Charlton goal, marvellous football once again, 
Grant to Gorman to Pitcher, a deep cross to the far post, and Nigel Martin may be an England goalkeeper, but he had absolutely no chance at all with a powerful downward header from Carl Lieburn. The score at the final whistle, Charlton Athletic 4, Crystal Palace 1. Having dumped the Eagles out of the Anglo-Italian Cup, Charlton's next match was another local derby against Millwall at the Valley. And Vanden Howe has absolutely flattened Sean Newton. The Charlton youngster is absolutely flat out in the penalty area. And there goes Robinson again. Lieburn, oh, I thought he might have set up Walsh there, but it was just under his feet, Colin Walsh. The layoff from Lieburn was a good one, but the ball just got caught under Colin Walsh's feet. The full-time score, Charlton Athletic nil, Millwall nil. The following week, Charlton were at Ashton Gate, playing away to Bristol City. The match ended in a goalless draw. Three days later, the Addicts were once again in action against Crystal Palace playing away in the second round of the Coca-Cola Cup. Well, they're a well-organised side, Charlton Athletic, but uh, just for one sake, give him Williams a bit of space. Now to Barry. And one of those that could well have got in to goal, and it's classified as a back pass. Well, that's somewhat harsh, I would think. That could have gone anywhere, but... And you'd imagine some Charlton fans and players would be rather irate if Palace take the lead from this. So we've already had one incident like this, and I wonder if Dean Gordon is going to hit this one. Gordon it is, and it's gone in. Dean Gordon giving Palace the lead. Such a skillful player when he's on the ball. Always looking for something different. Gareth Southgate hit well, and Gareth Southgate, another special from him. Gareth Southgate just can't stop scoring, and they're all spectacular efforts. Uh, it's good work by Minto, up to Colin Walsh. Forward to Carl Lee Byrne, but again, can't get the better of Eric Young, now on that time, shakes him off. John Tiver Lee Byrne! And Charlton get that final goal. Carl Lieburn been shackled well all night by Eric Young. That time, for once, got the better of him. And Cooley topped the opportunity as Nigel Martin came out. And that gives this game a completely different complexion. Humphrey out to Barry. It's a good cross in as well. David White up well. What a tremendous goal from Palace. The game finished. Crystal Palace 3, Charlton Athletic 1. The two South London sides' paths crossed yet again on the 26th of September for a televised league game at the Valley. Here's Brian Moore. Walsh gets it away to Nelson. Grant is up there with him. Now can Nelson get it across? He hammers in a good cross there towards... Well, that was so close to a Chris Coleman own goal. What on earth was he thinking about? Aguirre trying to play it wide, but it's well intercepted by Humphrey. But a good header by Minto. And suddenly Walsh can get forward with Grant in the middle. Nelson in the middle as well. Here's Kim Grant. Will he try a shot? He tries a curl and he's just wide. That was lovely. That was nice. The final score, Charlton Athletic nil, Crystal Palace nil. Next up on the Addicts fixture list was the away game against Moneybags Midlanders, Wolverhampton Wanderers, on the 2nd of October. Yeah! Wolves took the lead on the hour after Kevin Keane's free kick proved unstoppable for Mick Salmon. Two minutes from time, Phil Chappell rescued the Addicts from the jaws of defeat 
blasting the ball home from Carl Lieberman's header. The score of the final whistle, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, Charlton Athletic 1. The autumn of 1993 saw Britain lashed by torrential rain and the second leg Coca-Cola clash with Palace turned out to be a distinctly soggy affair. And White gets it out onto the right-hand side for Barry. And Barry has picked out Chris Armstrong and there it is. And that has killed the tie. The match finished. Charlton Athletic nil, Crystal Palace won with the Eagles going through to the next round, 4-1 on aggregate. Having failed to sparkle in the Coca-Cola Cup, the Addicts next outing was away to Barnsley on the 9th of October. Back up into third go Charlton, whose good start had been sabotaged by too many boar draws. Not yesterday, even if they did only score once, and that from the penalty spot after Gary Nelson had been brought down. Alan Pardew scored only Charlton's third in their last seven. But for the first time since August, they'd won a league game, and it's their first win at Barnsley since 1936. The 12th of October saw the Addicts jetting off to La Bella Italia to take on Brescia in the Anglo-Italian Cup. The match was something of an historic one, as it marked Charlton's first ever competitive game abroad. An occasion well worth celebrating in the opinion of these fans. In fact, the excitement all seemed too much for some people. Almost 300 loyal supporters had made it over to Italy for the game, 95 of them having joined the club's special chartered flight. From the Stadio Mario Rigamonti, Here's Steve Dixon. Oh, let's, oh, let's look at deflection. And it's, and it's in. A deflection. Ambrosetti with the shot. It took a wicked deflection. And it looped over Mick Salmon. And Brescia have the lead. And it's there. Oh, no, it's not. It looked so close. It looked so close. We've played a minute of stoppage time here in Brescia. And could this be the goal that wraps it up? Oh, there's a chance for Ambrosini. Ambrosetti has scored. It's all over. The final score, Brescia 2, Charlton Athletic 0. Returning home, the next fixture for the Addicts was a top-of-the-table clash with Leicester City at the Valley. And Lee Burton is there. Oh, it's there. Yes. It's gone in. It's Phil Chappell. He scores another one. Chappell is scoring some goals from these set pieces. Ball not back in. He was at the far post. And came off a Leicester head. And there he was, Phil Chappell, to put the first one in. 31 minutes the first half. Bill Chappell. Curled in. Chappell's there. Oh, a great save by Ward. Chappell was there, free header. Great save by Gavin Ward. Trying to make a substitution. I think it's the need for Colin Walsh. I think his ankle's gone again. And they've scored. What well, it's all going on. Leicester have scored. Agnew has nipped in and put it past Charlton. Tim Grant, he's got inside of Whitlow. Has he been brought down? Yes, it's a penalty. He'd gone round, he had gone round Whitlow, the ball had gone past him. Grant was there and Whitlow brought him down. Darren Pitcher to take the penalty. Four minutes of normal time. And he's there, drives it straight past the keeper's hands. The score of the final whistle, Charlton Athletic 2, Leicester City 1. Co-manager Steve Grit shared his thoughts on the game with John Fuller. Steve, we took the three points, but it's getting very nerve-wracking you know, hanging on to these one-goal leads. You must be concerned with our, our lack of goals. 
Well, I thought today it wasn't a question of lack of goals. I mean, we had certainly had enough chances. Um, I think some credit should go to their goalkeeper. He certainly made uh, three very good saves, particularly in the second half. Um, he's obviously there to do a job like that. Uh, so I would, I would say today it wasn't a case of that. It was a case of we created a lot of chances. We've hit the target, but unfortunately the keeper saved a few of them. We've only scored, besides today's two, three in the last eight games. I mean, that must be a bit of a concern then. No, we're not concerned at all. We're equal top of the league. How can we be concerned? Um, the defence are doing very well. Uh, the whole side is defending very well as a unit. Um, at the moment, we are creating chances, but unfortunately we're not scoring them. Uh, if we weren't creating the chances, I'd be more concerned. Um, but we are creating chances, and as I said today, we, with a bit of luck, we could quite easily have had three or four. Now placed second in the table, the Addicts' next game was away to Grimsby on the 23rd of October. The score of full time, Grimsby Town nil, Charlton Athletic 1. Meanwhile, striking changes were taking place at the Valley as the JCBs rolled into action on the Old East Terrace to start work on the club's new 6,000-seater stand. As work on the East Stand got underway, the Addicts' next match was the home game against Oxford on the 30th of October. And Nelson giving chase. Whitehead gets there first, and it's bounced free. And now Nelson with a chance. And now Grant with a chance, and blocked. It'll be a corner. is Beecham, Chapel, and now Walsh playing it forward into the space for Grant, and he's run, it's running free, but Lieberman with a good challenge, and it's bounced free for Nelson, and Nelson scores! 1-0 to Charlton, Gary Nelson with the goal. The final whistle saw Charlton going four points clear at the top of the table, with the full-time score, Charlton Athletic 1, Oxford United 0. Next up on the Addicts fixture list was an evening game with Derby County at the Valley. Here's John Fuller again. It's a good cross. Lee Burns there. It's Robinson. Oh! Taylor's picked it back up with Stuart Robinson. And it's over the bar. There's Pembridge, says Simpson. They're all there. Pulls to the right. Simpson's come away. Number 11. And that's gone round the wall. There's a goal for Paul Simpson. 31 minutes into the first half and against the runner play, fully against the runner play. Robinson four looking for a little hole there. And the gap, there he is. Just giving Grant to lead down to the left. Grant's found some space. Got a lot of space down the left hand side. Pinpoint the Charlton play if they can. Straight at Craig Short. I'll be in trouble. Oh, could this be? Yes, it's there. The equaliser. It was nearly an own goal. Keeper just managed to get a hand to it. 37 minutes. Harry Nelson equalises. Well turned by John Harps. Pitson's away. Simpson out here on the left. Quickly closed down though by Stuart Barmer. Sean Newton's come back in. Simpson gets it across. And there from behind. Nips in. Mark Pembridge. Unmarked. Ball curled in. The full time score Charlton Athletic 1, Derby County 2. After that disappointing result, there was happier news that week for Charlton, with the announcement that computer manufacturers Viglin had signed as club sponsors. The newly sponsored shirts got their first public airing the following Sunday in front of the LWT cameras at Luton. Up goes Lever. Oh, and a great shot there by Nelson. Can Robinson finish it off? Into the side netting. Wonderful shot there by Gary Nelson. 
so close to being goal number six for him. What about this? He, again, Lieburn made touch for him. I thought for a moment it was just going to clear this crossbar, but it whacked into it. Andre. A flick almost an arrogant little flick to the outside of the boot there by the Canadian. And Luton keeping this going well now. As Marvin Johnson takes it up for them. And Newton gets back there. It's still not out of play. Johnson again looking to turn it back. Does so. And a header. That goes in. And it's a, an excellent goal there for Luton Town. The score of the final whistle. Luton Town 1. Charlton Athletic 0. The 9th of November saw the Airborne Addicts once again following their team into Europe for the Anglo-Italian Cup clash with Ancona. Stuart Barmer gets it back to Mike Salmon and uh, Mike Salmon gives it back to Barmer and Barmer slips and now Turchi is in and Charlton in a bit of trouble here and there's a chance for Karawetsu and uh, Karawetsu makes it 1-0 to Ancona. Bad defending there by Charlton. Into with the throw. And the cross in. And Lieburn gets up. And Lieburn causing problems already. Having just come on, that was his first touch. And it's a it's going to be a corner. Armalini oh, under pressure there. And Lieburn getting up again and just whisker wide of that Armalini's oh, right hand post and Carl Lieburn causing problems within seconds of coming on. And this is Linger. And Linger finds Lieburn, and Lieburn's in, and Lieburn scores! Shark Nathalie's first ever competitive goal in European competition, and the goal scorer is Carl Lieburn. The game finished, and Kona won. Charlton Athletic won. Back in Blighty, the Charlton side were faced with some good old-fashioned British weather for their next game, hosting Notts County at a rain-lashed valley. Oh, and Chapel's slip rather, gone with a shot. Oh, and it's gone in. It's gone under Mike Salmon, and Notts County have taken the lead. And the county fans have only just realised. Chance for Garland. Saved by Cherry, it's, free, it's loose, and Lieburn's in, and Lieburn scores. Charlton equalised despite the efforts of the referee there. A quite bizarre goal, but Charlton are back on level terms. Lieburn and Garland celebrate in distinctive fashion. Cherry made the save, Lieburn followed up. The referee blocked the first shot, but Lieburn poked it home, it's one apiece. And Nelson again. Charlton keeping possession. Minto trying to find Lieburn. Shot for Nelson. And a chance for Grant. Oh, he's wide. <laughs> Lieburn again winning the ball and Garland bursting through the middle of the field. Garland shaking off one challenge. It's bouncing for Nelson. He scores. Gary Nelson puts Charlton in front. Peter Garland did extremely well there, bursting through the midfield, shaking off one challenge. And when the ball ran free to Gary Nelson, Nelson finished clinically for his sixth goal of the season. And this is Pitcher. Well, that's a fine ball down the line for Lieburn. Lieburn running clear of the county defence. He's picked out Gary Nelson, 3-1. Nelson grabs his second of the match, his seventh of the season, and a fine move involving the three players there in the picture. Pitcher with the, the pass, Lieben with the cross, and Gary Nelson with the finish. Charlton Athletic 3, Notts County 1. Burn, finding Newton, shaping for the drive. Oh, what about that? Sean Newton, and it's four for Charlton. That's the best goal of the game, without a doubt. 
Sean Luton the substitutes with a drive from easily 25, possibly even 30 yards. It's Charlton Athletic 4, Notts County 1. And the Addicts, I think, could go back to the top of the league this afternoon. Luton's second goal, and what about that? Cherry beating all ends up. And Darren Pitcher brings it forward for Charlton as the Addicts go in search of a fifth. Walsh. And now Lieburn. Pitcher. Back to Barman. Walsh taking over. Playing it inside for Lieburn. Oh, and Walsh is in. And Walsh has scored. It's five for Charlton, it's a rout. And we've just a couple of minutes to go. It's Charlton Athletic five, Notts County one. And you have to go back a few years to the last time that Charlton hit five. Goal hero Sean Newton talked us through his 78th minute stunner. Sean, congratulations on that goal. Picked your spot well. Yeah, um, I didn't have much time to pick where I was going to shoot. I heard Darren Pitchin say pass, so I didn't want to pass to him, so I just had a, had a dig and it went in. Seems to make a habit of these screamers. Scored one at Tranmere, that's going well. Um, I don't score that many a season, so um, whatever I get, it's got to be a good goal. So I'm glad to score. You're coming on a substitute last three games, coming on at critical times. It was nice to come on today and be able to fit in nicely on five goals. Well, coming on a substitute has probably done me like a world of good, saving my legs now and again. So, coming on today and scoring a good goal, like, put the managers in a good position. Seems to have been um, one of Charlton's uh, failures lately, so only scoring one goal per game and not even that in the last two games. It was nice to put five away. Well, having been on the last two defeats, playing well at Derby and um, not too well at Luton, we had to come here and do it, put things right, and we did with five goals. Charlton's next match was the Anglo-Italian Cup tie with Ascoli on the 16th of November. That rather looked like a foul. Newton going on. And this is Stroglio for Ascoli. Beerhoff making the run. On this near side, it's Menolacina. Oh, and that's gone in, and that's an error by Mick Salmon. The ball certainly swerved. Manolacina again. Here's Beerhoff. And Beerhoff makes it 2 0 for Ascoli. German centre forward on 39 minutes. Oliver Beerhoff. It looks like it's going to be Troglio. Oh, and that's a fine goal. Pedro Troglio, who played in the 1990 World Cup final for Argentina scores a fine free kick. The match finished, Charlton Athletic nil, Ascoli three. For their next game away to Peterborough, the Addicts had a new face in the side in the form of Mark Robson, the new signing from West Ham. The only goal of the game came after 64 minutes when Gary Nelson broke the deadlock to slam in his eighth goal of the season. With the Addicts still leading the race for Division One glory, Charlton's next match was at home to Luton on the 4th of December. Corner to Charlton. Walsh coming across, didn't take this one. Left foot curling in. It's a short one. And he's back. Yes! And it's there. And it's Phil Chappell. Phil Chappell, that's his fourth of the season. Short corner, flicked on, and Chappell was there, heading the ball down. Goal scorer there, poor play John Robinson again, taking that on his shoulder, cutting inside, he's going to go in and out, he's gone inside, Thomas, good drive, oh, that was unlucky. The score of the final whistle, Charlton Athletic 1, Luton Town 0. The following Sunday, Charlton was celebrating the first anniversary of their return to the Valley, as they hosted 
Jim Smith's Portsmouth. Sadly, however, Pompey seemed determined to spoil the party. Again, McLaughlin. Here he is down this left flank this time. Walsh again. Played inside. And a chance for Warren Neal. And they've scored. 1 0 Portsmouth. Dirty. Uh, Gary Nelson up front, but there's an awful lot of support in red shirts coming up very quickly. If Nelson can find a good pass here, and maybe he'll try something himself, it's Robinson, and he's against the post. The full-time score, Charlton Athletic nil, Portsmouth 1. There was more bad news for Charlton a week later, as they played away to struggling Birmingham. With the Midlanders now under the wing of new boss Barry Fry, the Blues took the lead after 51 minutes with Kenny Lowe blasting the shot in from 35 yards. The final score, Birmingham City 1, Charlton Athletic 0. Charlton's next match was a somewhat meaningless one as they hosted Pisa in the Anglo-Italian Cup, despite being unable to qualify for the finals. Garland is dispossessed, and now the chance here the ball is a square and there it is, the first goal coming in from Muzzi. Pisa take the lead. And this is Mark Robson. Robson twisting away. Oh, he's brought down there. Oh, and Robson's lashed out and there's a bit of an argy-bargy off the ball there. The referee has produced a red card. This is Mutsi, the scorer of the first goal. Oh, and that's a fine drive. John Vaughan beaten. Mutsi scores a second. Chapel. And that's intercepted. And Pisa are on for a third here. It's Mutsi for the hat trick. And that's a superb finish. Mutsi completes his hat trick. Now a chance for Robinson. Oh, it's Max against the post. The full-time score, Charlton Athletic nil, Pisa 3. On the 27th of December, Charlton were at Roots Hall, playing away to Southend United. With the Shrimpers now managed by Peter Taylor following Barry Fry's departure, the home side took the lead after 18 minutes, thanks to this effort from Keith Jones. 17 minutes later, Jason Lee had made it 2-0 as he rounded Mick Salmon to find the back of the Charlton net. Two minutes before half-time, the Addicts were back in the game as Carl Lieburn's header whistled past South End keeper Paul Sampson. Midway through the second half, Southend increased their advantage as on form Ricky Otto fired home the Shrimpers' third goal of the afternoon. Festive spirits seemed to be distinctly lacking from this match, and with ten minutes to go, both sides were down to ten men after Mick Bodley and Colin Walsh had been shown the red card. However, there were more goals to come, and with just a minute left on the clock, Alan Pardew had made it 3-2. As the game ebbed away, referee Graham Pooley completed his red card treble by dismissing Phil Chappell for handballing within the area. Graham Bressington fired home from the penalty spot to leave the full-time score, South End United 4, Charlton Athletic 2. There was more drama for Charlton two days later, as they hosted Stoke at the Valley. Grant's going to get past two men here, and he gets in between them. And Grant keeping it in. Minto. There's Walsh. To the back is Lieburn. Yes! There it is, Cole Lieburn. Second goal in two games. Twenty-seven minutes 
into the first half. Leeburn scores. There's some leaks going about out there. Someone's down on the floor. I haven't quite seen who it is at the moment. It's a red card. Bannister has gone. Obviously, there was a few legs flying more than there should have been. You see, there was some incident there, but didn't see quite how bad it was. Back in we go. It's Brown. Oh, it's a good shot. It's Nelson. Yes, it's there. It's there. I don't know who's going to claim it, McCleary or Nelson, but it was there. We should have made more than one earlier, but we're there now. The final score, Charlton Athletic 2, Stoke 0. New Year's Day saw the Charlton side at the city ground playing away to Notts Forest. Forest took the lead in the 47th minute with Des Little scoring his first ever goal for the club. Charlton skipper Alan McCleary saved the Addicts bacon 10 minutes after the break, finding the back of the Knotts net to leave the final score at a goal apiece. Two days later, Charlton were back on home turf, braving the elements for a home game with West Brom. Short one to Walsh. That's Robson. Gonna bring the ball out, he finds the base, it's Bartu, yes! What a lovely goal! The West Brom defence just stood there. Robson making space, worked his way around, chipped the ball into the far post, Alan Pardew comes in, heads the ball cleanly, freely, back of the goal. He's heading down, yes, he's there! Lee Byrne has scored. Lee Byrne's pulling away, corner from Walsh. I make that 89 minutes. Cole Lee Byrne's got up, headed it home. Bottom of the right hand keeper, right close to the post. And that's 2-0. There's not many people have left the ground here for this game. Still looking round, not many seats are free. Obviously we're starting to wander away now on 90 minutes, but they've stayed to the end. And through the conditions, they're breaking away. And there's a goal. Score looks like number 11, Hamilton. The final score. Charlton Athletic 2, West Bromwich Albion 1. John Fuller discussed the game with Charlton new boy Mark Robson. Mark, first time we spoke to you this season. You've just got yourself now back in the side, three games on the trot. Must you feel nice and confident? Uh, yeah, I, th I think today uh, probably is the best game I've had so far. Um, uh, the, the last couple of games I've been playing, I've done okay, but not really as good as what I wanted to, you know. But uh, no, I felt today, I've, you know, I felt very confident out there, and uh, the team are playing very well at the minute. Overjoyed with that cross before the ball even hit the net, you were doing a forward somersault. Yeah, no, I was because you know I think uh, I knocked quite a few crosses in today actually, probably more than I've done since I've been in the side. But um, no, just just pleased to see one of them go in. Yeah. They pushed you out more to the right today and left you alone, where I felt in the other two games you were being pulled inwards to create a few stuff. Being left out there, you know, suited you today? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, the, to be honest, the, the last few games, as it happens, I've not really had a lot of the ball when I've been staying wide, but I've not really been getting it. So I tend to, you know, as any winger does, when you're not getting the ball, you go inside looking for it. So that's what I've been doing, really. But today, uh, luckily for me, I mean, I did get quite a lot of it. So, um, and, and obviously, once I do get it, it's down to me to get crosses in. The hideous weather had threatened to postpone the Addicts' third round FA Cup clash with Burnley on the 8th of January. But thanks to groundsman Colin Powell and his team, the match was able to go ahead as planned. Oh, and Heath was, Heath had a chance to break down. They were quickly away. Good ball from Brown to Robson. She pulls it back, Pardew, right hand is there! Another goal from Pardew, uh, a well, the two combined on Monday against West Brom, and here they are again, a lovely cross from Mark Robson. Lee Burns, good chest down. Pardew and Robson. 
chip to the far post, Lee burns up. Hendel was the man stopping that. And now the linesman's there, he's not having any of it. He's going to say playing on, Robson wins. Lee Byrne, yes! And it's Robson's determination down the right. Dummy from King Clark, Lee Byrne puts it away. Three minutes into the second half, Charlton make it 2-0. Grant, Grant, battle well and one well, he's into the box, Kim Grant, yes, he's there, he's wanted that goal for the last three weeks, so near, and he turned, turned into a strong tackle, won the ball back well, rolled in between two players, and hit the ball home. The final score, Charlton Athletic 3, Burnley 0. Having secured a passage through to the fourth round of the Cup, the Addicts' next outing was the away game with Leicester on the 16th of January. David Oldfield's just made a mess of that one and uh, I don't think he'll do that again, he's just had a real... There goes Robson, oh, a terrific go, is it now off the inside of that upright and Mark Robson could not have been closer to his first goal for Charlton Athletic, that deserved one. Oh, this time Speed hits it straight onto Lieben's head and Lieben's giving Grant a chance to give Charlton the lead, he goes down and he's given it right on the edge of the area. Well, Charlton will complain vigorously about that. Certainly worth seeing again as Kim Grant broke onto Lieben's pass. Is he in or is he out of the area? Well, I mean, Charlton are unfortunate. So, can they make the breakthrough from this free kick? Robson's in there, and Brown is in there, and it's going to be thumped in, and off the bar this time from Brown, and it has gone in. No, the whistle's sounded for offside now. Well, Charlton must scarcely believe it. They cannot believe it. Steve Britt returns to his seat. Charlton have hit the bar, hit the post, had a penalty claim turned down, and had a goal disallowed all in the space of 60 seconds. Well, there's no question Lieburn was in an offside position. But I have to say, although people will tell me what's he doing on the field if he's not interfering, I do believe that the goalkeeper made a genuine effort for that to save it. It flew in the corner, and I think Charlton have been unlucky. And Thompson's free kick. Oh, and the keeper Salmon didn't get there, and he's in trouble here. And it's hooked into the net. And Leicester City take the lead through Simon Grayson. Charlton still not having any fortune. Now Lieburn gets in the chance is here and the equaliser. Charlton Athletic have got their reward. Stuart Barmer, only his second goal of the season who gets in here. Lieburn takes a lot of the credit to tussling away for it. Pardew was in there and the final touch was from Stuart Barmer. Mills. Again, the crowd roaring, paying for uh, for blood here. Oh, no, it's Ewan Roberts gets in there. I'm not sure whether that came off a Charlton man, but as Ewan Roberts won it at the death for Leicester City. The game finished. Leicester City 2, Charlton Athletic 1. Meanwhile, there was better luck for the Charlton Reserve squad as they played Millwall at Welling United's Parkview Road. The Addicts found themselves a goal down to their arch rivals 15 minutes into the game after Mark Kennedy's leaping header proved unstoppable for keeper John Vaughan. Shortly before half time, Charlton had pulled the scores level as Gary Nelson rifled the shot in from the edge of the area. Minutes later, the Addicts had taken the lead as a crucial error from Lions defender Matthew Middleton allowed Danny Mills to touch the ball over the line. Oh, 
Ten minutes into the second half, Sean Newton completed a fine night for the reserve team's loyal following, slotting home Danny Mills' cross. To leave the final score, Charlton Athletic 3, Millwall 1. Back with the first team on the 22nd of January, Charlton were back at the valley to do battle with Barnsley. Minto Pardew. So that's a nice turn by Alan Pardew. Garland's got some space out here for Brown. A bit better of ball to feet stuff. Brown cuts inside 2-3. Oh, and inside's Roberts. It's there, John Robertson. Barnsley played for the offside. Lovely play, Steve Brown went in, moved around two plays, pushed the ball in between the back. And John Robinson nipped in, pushed the ball past Butler, the whole of the Barnsley back four stood still. Lee Burns back post, heads it down. Oh! Barnsley with the ball, Redfern. Archdeacon's gone to the left, he's going to go on his own. Oh, it's a good tackle from Pardew. And there's chance for Charlton. For four going forward and three. Barnsley coming back there in numbers now. Robson. The full Barnsley defensive there. It's a, he's found some space, could be his first goal, it is, yes! Mark Robson scores his first goal. Been so close at other times and he's there. It's his first goal for the side. Came round the back. Had a 1-2 off Lieber and he got a bit of a lucky break of a Barnsley defence. And Mark Robson scores his first goal for Charlton Athletic. Let's take it. Bulldoze his way through. And he finds Peyton again. Here he is, take it, still up there. He finds Peyton again, is he there? He is! The final score, Charlton Athletic 2, Barnsley 1. The Attic's next outing saw such famous names as Kenny Dalgleish, Stuart Ripley, Tim Flowers and Alan Shearer visiting the Valley as the Charlton side took on the might of Blackburn Rovers in the FA Cup fourth round. Robson with the corner. Flick on from Brown, Lee Burns in there! Flowers with the save and Lieburn claiming that his shirt was pulled. And Carl Lieburn again angry with the referee. Robson with the corner. Brown got the flick on and Lieburn at the far post and definitely had his shirt pulled there by Tim Sherwood. Now McCleary and now Brown again. Charlton retaining possession well. The ball delivered deep towards Lieburn. The chance down for pitcher. Oh, well struck, oh, off the post. And now Robson with the cross, and Lee Burns in there, and Kevin Moran gets the ball away. That's the closest we've come to a goal this afternoon. Darren Pitcher striking the ball from something like 20, 23 yards outside the box. Flowers was beaten, but it cannoned back into play off the post. McCleary then with the free kick for Charlton. Lee Burns again the target. Got up well. Lee Burns with the shot, oh, and inches wide. Flowers again was beaten, but the ball also beat that far post. And Charlton here are in the ascendancy. The final whistle saw Charlton forcing their opulent opponents to a replay. With the full-time score, Charlton Athletic nil, Blackburn Rovers nil. Afterwards, John Fuller chatted to Rovers striker Alan Shearer. Alan, your first trip to the Valley, what do you think of it? Yeah, it's coming along very nicely. Um, they're building a nice team here and... Um, I nearly had the result today, but not quite. Um, we got another bite of the cherry. In fact, it was a typical cup battle, wasn't it? Both defence played really well today. Yeah, they did. It was a very scrappy and horrible game to play in, to be honest. I mean, there wasn't a lot of chances flying around. Um, and I think we'll certainly look forward to the replay more than them. I seem to be into these replays at the moment, don't you? Portsmouth the other week. Yeah, it's important you don't get beat. Um, we've come in, we, as I said, we've, we've not conceded any goals, and uh, we'll look forward to the replay. Alex Ferguson was quoted the other week as saying it's better playing a Premier side because you know what's coming. It's not easy coming down to Division 1, is it? Certainly not. It's not coming down, um, easy coming down to any division. Um, and give Charlton credit today. that They've played well and battled hard. Maybe could have nicked it at times, but they, they haven't. Um, it was a very, uh, I thought, a very boring game with, with no, no goals in it. But um, there you go. Another game to come. The following Saturday, it was back to league action for Charlton as they entertained Grimsby Town at the Valley. Thank you. 
Keep on the flick on. And now for Pardew. Oh, it's wide from Alan Pardew. That's the best chance of the game. And now Jim Dobbin. And there goes Mendonca. And Mendonca's got the leg to McCleary. And Mendonca has scored. And Grimsby Town take the lead with their first purposeful attack of the match. Pitcher in the inside right channel. Oh, Robson skipping away from two defenders. Now, what can Mark Robson do from here? The drive. Oh! Inches away. The goalkeeper got a touch, surely. The final score, Charlton Athletic nil, Grimsby Town 1. Three days later, Charlton were at Ewood Park for the eagerly awaited FA Cup replay against Blackburn Rovers. This is Nelson. Nelson holding off Ripley. Nelson on his left foot, there's a shot and a fine save by Flowers. And that's Charlton's first effort of the night. This is Brown. Swinging the ball into the box. Leeburn's up there. Pitcher, deflection, and a goal! And Charlton take the lead! Extraordinary stuff. Darren Pitcher with a deflected drive. I think it was Morrison that stuck out a leg. The ball zipped in past Tim Flowers. Charlton take the lead at Ewood Park. It's Blackburn Rovers nil. Charlton Athletic 1, 15 minutes gone. And Charlton have a shot lead here at Blackburn. And now Wilcox, Newton is the defender. Wilcox swings it in. Oh, and Mick Sammer's got to head it away from underneath his crossbar. And finally McCleary gets it clear. And Charlton were rocking. Kim Grant showing Berg a clean pair of heels. Shot comes in. Oh, so close. Mick Salmon with the free kick. The referee checked his watch yet again. And it's there, and it's all over. The final whistle goes. Charlton Athletic have made history here at Ewood Park. It's the first time that Charlton have beaten a team from a higher division in an FA Cup tie since 1934. And it's a wonderful night for Charlton Athletic. The match finished with the Addicts dumping their big spending opponents from the Premiership out of the Cup. With the final score, Blackburn Rovers nil, Charlton Athletic won. Now listen, when you work hard and play hard, you need to quench that first, fast, eyes are stuck. Isotonic it is, soft it ain't. On the 12th of February, Charlton's euphoria looked set to continue as the side played away to relegation-haunted Oxford United. Carl Lieburn opened the floodgates after 25 minutes, outpacing Matt Elliott to fire the ball past Phil Whitehead. <laughs> 15 minutes after the break, Lieburn notched up his second, converting Nelson's cross to score his 12th goal of the season. found themselves with the proverbial mountain to climb after 71 minutes when Kim Grant was fouled in the area by Anton Rogan. Alan Pardew drove the ball home from the penalty spot, bringing the score to 3-0. Two minutes from time, Gary Nelson wrapped up the points for the Addicts, scoring from a deflected drive to leave the full-time result. Oxford United nil, Charlton Athletic four. A week later, the Addicts were hoping to continue their tremendous FA Cup run as they played away to Bristol City in the fifth round. Twelve minutes into the game, the Addicts found themselves in arrears after Brian Tinian capitalised on a controversial free kick. 
to fire a fierce 25-yard drive into the back of the Charlton net. Mark Robson brought Charlton back from the brink 15 minutes after the break, levelling the scoreline to force City to a replay. The full-time score, Bristol City 1, Charlton Athletic 1. The 22nd of February saw the Charlton side bracing themselves against Arctic conditions as they played at home to Sunderland. And now Charlton come forward through Brown. Grant's got a little bit of space. On oh, Brown's move wide. Inside, this is Nelson. He can see himself for the left shot. Oh, a great save. The final score, Charlton Athletic nil, Sunderland there. Charlton's next match was the home game with Watford on the 26th of February. Here's John Fuller again. Obviously curling away, Chapels, there he is there. A great save from Digwee. So Robson's his fifth, and Charlton's fifth going to again curl it back to the 12-yard spot. There's Nelson's up, and there's Pardio, it's in! Didn't quite get a good head on to it. The ball just dropping down, Alan Pardio running through, running the keeper to beat, drives it home. 25 minutes gone in the first half. He's only got Gorman in front of him, here's Gorman. Gorman just turning the other way to pitcher. Just got Minto wide. Charlton trying to spread it about at the moment. Robson again trying to flick on to Minto. He might make this one the box, and he does. That's a penalty, yes. Wasn't intentional, but he went in, and Minto had gone by him. Mr. Borrett, assuming it's not quite in the right 12 yard spot. That comes Pardew. And there it is, Pardew, second of the afternoon. Charlton second. Oh, it's Porter again looking for the shot. And it's in the top corner. Not one of the best Charlton performances they'd be pleased. And it's a penalty. That is a penalty. Pull from behind. Pardew for the hat trick. Charlton's third. And he's missed. The match finished with the Addicts back in second place in the table with the final score, Charlton Athletic 2, Watford 1. The following Wednesday, Charlton were hosting Bristol City in the fifth round FA Cup replay. Leeburn hoping to find some daylight in the Bristol defence. Perhaps uh, Nelson can. Oh, and Leeburn has. And there's the first real chance. And it fell to the top scorer, Carl Leeburn. Chapel and Leeburn up together. Oh, here's Brown. Penalty. Brown was shoved to one side there. The right back and Vic Gallo had no doubt. Pardew missed one on Saturday, although he scored one, his pitcher. It's there. And Charlton take the lead. They'll be pleased with that uh, first half lead. They'll want them to hold it now for the next two or three minutes, and they might increase it here. Robson got in, and there's trouble for Bristol, and Robson skipped round everybody except the last man. It was Shale, and there's two against two up here. Lieburn needs to make his presence felt. Grant is away, takes on Munro, comes inside. It's Kim Grant. It's still Kim Grant. It's there. They've done it now. Charlton as good as in the sixth round and just listen there may only be 8,000 people in this ground that used to hold 80 but that doesn't matter now young and old they celebrate an historic moment for Charlton Athletic and Kim Grant here takes on Munro first of all comes inside him keeps possession Dave Martin is the next man to challenge Grant fools him as well Bryant tries to close him down, and the ball may have been deflected, but it's Grunt's goal, and it's 2-0. And... and Charlton Athletic make modern history. They are through to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup for the first time since 1947. 
the year that they won the FA Cup. The final score, Charlton Athletic 2, Bristol City 0. Back with the league, Charlton's next fixture was an away match with Bolton Wanderers on the 5th of March. McAteer plays the ball into Kyle, Kyle to McGinley, there it is, 1-0, Super John, it's easy. Super John back on form, but one and a good goal. Phillips with the throw, finds Mark Patterson down near the byline, good play this by Patterson, Patterson with a good cross to McGinley, John McGinley, two goal John McGinley, what a super goal, uh, Mark Patterson, good cross and a super finish. Alan, but as you say, uh, We'll give uh, Aidan Davison, who was looking into the sunlight, the benefit of the doubt there. As you can see, there it is. That's a goal. Yes, Charlton back in the game, so to speak. 2-1, a good goal there. David Lee. Great opportunity here. McGinley, surely a penalty it is indeed. Surely a penalty. Well, now we're going to see a hat-trick here from John. Three goals. Will he be fit enough to take it? I think he will. McGinley runs up, shoots. Yeah. One, bam. Thank you, man. Hat-trick. Three goals. John McGinley. What a ding dong do. To say, playing time added on now by the referee. Seagraves. And small. Shot again, there it is. The full time score Bolton Wanderers 3, Charlton Athletic 2. The following week, the Addicts were competing in an FA Cup quarter final for the first time since 1947 as they took on soar away Premiership leaders, Manchester United. And Leeburn, the big striker, carries a lot of responsibility today. He's got to put himself around and try and test. Bruce and Callister. And my goodness, Schmeichel's lost out to Grant. And here is Lieburn. And what on earth went on there? Forward by Pardew. This is Grant who beat Bruce. Oh, look where Schmeichel is. And Kim Grant. Well, well, what was it a handball by the goalkeeper? Now, what does the referee do? Schmeichel was miles out. What, what were you doing there, Bruce is saying? But wait a minute, does the referee see that as a handling offence by the goalkeeper or will Schmeichel claim it was his chest? What he was doing there is another issue entirely and look at this, there's a serious danger that the Manchester United goalkeeper must be sent off the field and is! Sensation here at Old Trafford. Peter Schmeichel is ordered off. But Alex Ferguson has to think what to do. Les Seeley must surely come on. Robson talking to Schmeichel as he leaves the field, but Seeley will have to keep go. And Pallister has gone up to the near post. Bruce is further over. Hughes! What a save! Hughes! Go! It's Mark Hughes. And Manchester United, having played for less than a minute with ten men, have taken the lead. You can't take your eyes off this game for a second. There's something happening all the time. It's Kanchelskis now. Gigs to his left, so is Cantona. Can he pick one of them out? Should he pick one of them out? No, he shouldn't. Kanchelskis makes it 2-0. It came off the goalkeeper, but it may well have put Manchester United into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Antonar and Giggs are there again. And Kanchelskis through the middle, onside, put there by Giggs. And Kanchelskis goes round John Bourne, and it's 3-0, and it's all over now. And the Russian World Cup player scores his second goal of the afternoon. Well, what was it? 1-0 against Sheffield United, 2-0 against Norwich. 3-0 the round after at Wimbledon. Is it going to be four today? Or can Charlton get back into it here? Robson, good run. Flipped on and the header by Lieburn, it's in! They have come back. Seely beaten. 
and Carl Lieburn gives the chart and hordes at the other end something to cheer about. It's Mark Robson with the run and Lieburn's header is perfect. The game finished. Manchester United 3, Charlton Athletic 1. A scoreline that failed to put a dampener on a memorable occasion for the addicts' travelling supporters. The 15th of March saw the Addicts facing their arch-rivals Millwall for an evening match at the Den. Chance here, oh he must score! 1-0! Stevens couldn't get the tackle in. And Charlton Athletic steal the lead. Hurlock, the man on the ball. Oh, what a goal! Alex Ray, his 12th goal of the season. Kenny Cunningham, not a bad ball in. Header there, Morley, force wide. Goal shot, is there! Oh, Morley scores! Right at the death. We're into stoppage time, and Charlton can't believe it. There was more disappointment for the Addicts the following Sunday as they played away to Crystal Palace. Brown gets it clear, and space now for Pitcher. Robson's in the middle for it. Took a long time deciding. Lieburn's in there too. And Walsh, and a great save by Martin. Young in there again. Southgate more or less at the near post, looking possibly for the little flick on. They haven't been happy, uh, Palace, with the way they've been delivering the corners the last few games. That's a much better. And Chris Armstrong. No chance there for Bourne. And Pardew. It's Walsh who's dinked it in. And it's gone in. Has it from Lieber? has decided no. Stewart. That was a good ball. Salako. Gorton is making a terrific run outside him, but he won't get there, in fact, because Salako is making such strides himself. And a good cross coming in! And Stewart has made it two! The final score, Crystal Palace 2, Charlton Athletic 0, with the Addicts dropping to fifth in the table. The Addicts' fortunes continued to crumble on the 26th of March as the side played at home to Wolves. The game finished, Charlton Athletic nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers won. Two days later, Charlton were at a rain-soaked Hawthorns to take on struggling West Brom. Finds Robson again. Lee Byrne gets the header. Neymar whips it over the bar for a corner. Taylor puts it wide, Hunt. Nice cross from Hunt. Donovan! And that's one -nil. Nicely worked ball wide by Taylor. Four against two if he can keep the run going. Needs to find Hunt possibly. Goes himself, finds Hunt. And Hunt puts away the chance. It was happier news for Charlton on the 2nd of April as the Addicts entertained Southend United. The match marked the historic opening of the club's impressive new 6,000-seater East Stand with the honour of cutting the ribbon falling to addict supporter Alan Kavanagh. With a carnival atmosphere helping to boost the team's morale, our match coverage comes from London Weekend Television. Bennett, cross comes in towards Lieburn, and might come in for Robson too. Hardy knocks it down, Lieburn, and somehow Southend kept it out. Waiting 
to uh, make a move as well. And rebound! That's a rear shot and a good save, and it's Roman. So Paul Gorman, who had that terrible miss just before half-time, has got a valuable header. Mickey Bennett, back again to Pardew. Looking for a good cross here. It's a D1. It's a great goal by Lieber. A little twist of triumph there after a glorious leap. But what a great cross by Pardew as well. Deeper one, looking up, sizing it up, played the deeper one in a terrific leap there by Carl Lieber, and Charlton at 2-0 up. Here he is again, oh, good one. Pardew chasing this one. Still with a chance for goal number three. It's a certainty now. 3-0. Alan Pardew, the scorer, and Charlton absolutely rampant in this second half. The complexion of the game has changed entirely and Charlton are virtually home and dry now. Here's Ricky Otto. Charlton leading 3-0. Oh, good play here by Otto. Chance to make something for him. Kicked off the line, though. By Garland. Up goes Garland again. Just gets his head to it. It's Hunt who's pulled one back for South End. Oh, onside. And he answered with a chance to make it 3 2. And does so. Well, it certainly makes the remaining seven minutes pretty interesting. Paul Sanson with the free kick. Hit high towards the Charlton penalty area. Oh, and out to go a long way. And it's a goal for Ansa. And it's 3 3. Well, that was a terrible mistake in the Charlton defence. And Andy Ansa, who came on as a sub at half time, has now scored twice to bring 3 0 back to 3 3. It's an amazing South End comeback. Well, they're furious with the side. Three priceless points. And well, now it's going to be one at the most. Bennett turns it back. And the Charlton fans want it pushed the other way. Up goes Lieburn. Now Nelson. Second goal and Charlton's fourth when Paul Sanson didn't really get hold of Gary Nelson's shot. And Pardew was the first to react. It was a good foraging run here by Nelson. Sanson didn't really get hold of that at all. And in comes Pardew to force it over the line. And Charlton are back in the lead at 4 3. The full time score Charlton Athletic 4, South End United 3. Afterwards, co-manager Alan Kerbishley discussed that vital result with John Fuller. Have you calmed down now after that game? To be fair, I was OK. You know, I was, I was sitting there with half hour to go thinking, oh, this is the first time this season, really, that we've been in control and uh, I can enjoy the next half hour. And then as soon as I thought about that, they scored. And I thought panic set in then. And uh, obviously the run we've had, that's why it did set in. But they got the second one, which I'm assured is yards offside. Uh, and then that was it, wasn't it? You know, I, I, when they scored, I just felt like that was it. But someone like Pards just loves getting in the box. When I saw Nell shooting, I couldn't see anybody else in the box, to tell the truth. Then suddenly the keeper makes a save, and it's great. I think it was a great old day. The atmosphere at the ground would stand open. Uh, obviously, if we can get anything at Stoke, I think that the place will be filled for uh, Knott's Forest next week. What sort of a carnival before the game, and then we had a festival on the game, didn't we? No, the atmosphere was a lot better. I mean, if anyone would have been here against Wolves last week, there was no atmosphere. Apprehension, tentative. But uh, today, before the game, you could sense that there was a lot of lot of uh, people there who had come out to enjoy the day and uh, were getting behind the team. 
On Easter Monday, the Charlton squad were in the Potteries, playing away to Stoke City. Six defeats in seven games has cost Charlton during the run-in, and it was Mark Walters on loan from Liverpool who engineered the latest at Stoke. His skill set up Toddy Orlickson for the only goal of the game. The following Saturday, the Addicts were back at the Valley to take on promotion hunting Nottingham Forest. Pierce quickly away to Rosario. And he's found Lee once again offside. He's got an open goal against them and he's through his legs. And there we are on 28th minute. Barmer chipping into the forest area. Bennett looking for Lee on the far side. He's just not getting there. Plenty of blue shirts defending at the moment. Pitcher. He's got Nelson on his own. Off the crossbar. He's going to go back in and head it over. The score at full time. Charlton Athletic nil. Nottingham Forest won. Things continued to look black for the Addicts as they played away to Derby County on the 16th of April. Grit and Kerbishley haven't had much money to spend. Yesterday, two million pound strikers kept Derby on course for the top six. Tommy Johnson seized on Alan McCleary's mistake and the pattern repeated itself when Scott Minto dallied and Paul Kitson put the game and promotion beyond Charlton. The 19th of April saw the Addicts making the long journey north for an evening game at Middlesbrough. Stamp, first time ball in, Wilkinson, far side, hits the ball, Moore, Middlesbrough in the lead. Vickers, Moore, slays it back to Fleming, Wilkinson, deftest of touches, and Hendry's away for Middlesbrough, and a chance to make it two, and Hendry makes it two. Pitcher square. Minto from a long way out, hits the post. Pears was beaten on that occasion, and the ball's going to be driven back in. Lee Byrne with a head, but it's just taken off his head. Flick back in, Pears comes a long way out, punches clear. With the flag up for offside. McCleary with a kick for Charlton. They look to pull a goal back. It's high in for Lee Byrne, Wilkinson does well. The ball's hacked clear, but drops straight back into the danger zone again. Robson trying to flick it forward back to Robson drives it across the face of the box this must be a chance and Charlton somehow haven't yet scored fired in and finally fired wide final score Middlesbrough 2 Charlton Athletic nil. Charlton's gloom was lifted somewhat by their next match at home to Peterborough United on the 23rd of April this is Leeburn this is Walsh, and this is Nelson, Nelson's through, he's chance for Gary Nelson, oh it's a fumble and it's in, and after making two or three excellent saves in the first quarter of an hour, Scott Cooksey is finally beaten by Gary Nelson, who will be the first to admit he didn't strike the shot very well. Looking the ball into the box, looking for Eorfa, and Chart will get it away, and this is Walsh. And that's a lovely first-time ball from Colin Walsh out towards the right flank. Nelson cutting in. Gary Nelson on his left foot with a chance. Oh, fine goal. That's two for Gary Nelson. It's two for Charlton. And Peterborough showing why they are bottom of the division. They were sliced apart there by Charlton. Colin Walsh will take this corner on the near side for Charlton. And there's Lieburn, 3-0. And dreadful defending there by Peterborough. Carl Lieburn profits. Colin Walsh lays on his third goal of the game. And it will be Colin Walsh with the free kick for Charlton. Pardew's making a run, and that's four. And Colin Walsh again, the provider. Charlton lead 4 0. And Alan Pardew notching his 10th league goal of a profitable campaign. Minto gets in there. Pitcher wins the header. Oh, and they're all over the place, Peterborough. And Gary Nelson's off. He's in search of his hat-trick. There's a shot. Oh, deflection, and there indeed is his hat-trick. Gary Nelson becomes the first player to score three in a game for Charlton since Jim Melrose 
some eight years ago. It took a deflection, but there's no doubt that Nelson will claim the goal. And that's a hat-trick. And I think it's probably Gary Nelson's first. And Bennett's in here. The ball falls kindly for Howarth. Howarth with a touch, far post, Ken Charlery, and he's pulled one back. The final score, Charlton Athletic 5, Peterborough United 1. Afterwards, John Fuller presented the match ball to hat-trick scorer Gary Nelson. Gary, 550 league games, first hat-trick. This gives me great pleasure in presenting you match ball, Thank duly you. signed Thank you. by all the players and everyone today. You, you must be very pleased. Well, it wasn't the uh, well. I suppose if you're going to get a hat trick, it's uh, it's a nice feeling anyway. But it wasn't uh, the best of hat tricks, I, I don't suppose. But it felt very good anyway. The following Tuesday, Charlton were at Tranmere, desperately chasing an increasingly remote playoff place. Leaving the obvious target, they're getting each other's way. The Charlton players there, second stamp, third stamp, must be a goal off the underside of the bar. Nelson put everything behind that shot then. Cannoned off the bar and uh, causes a tram here. Counter attack, the goalkeeper's got himself into all kinds of problems. You don't do that when John Aldridge around. Silly boy, silly boy. Aldridge, goal 27 of the season. And from hitting the bar to goal. Into the last 10 minutes now. This is Nevin with the corner. Garnet up there. Oh, good goal. Jed Brannan. The game finished. Tranmere Rovers 2, Charlton Athletic 0. Dashing the addict's slender hopes of promotion. Charlton's next match was an away game with Notts County on the 30th of April. Carl Lieburn was left all alone to prod in Colin Walsh's free kick. But it was a roller coaster afternoon at Meadow Lane, and Notts County still managed to get themselves back in front by half time. Charlton's Mickey Bennett didn't think much of the decision, but his arm certainly went up and made contact with the ball, and the referee deemed it deliberate. Mark Draper's penalty was too good for Mike Salmon, and then it's stoppage time at the end of the first half, so was Draper's corner. Salmon's leap wasn't good enough, and Gary Lund couldn't miss. And with just 15 minutes remaining, it appeared Notts County couldn't really fail to make it 17 home wins for the season, as Gary McSwegan swept past Phil Chappell and cut inside. 3-1. But things weren't quite as convincing at the other end. From another set piece, Gary Nelson headed down for the unmarked Alan McCleary to volley in a rare goal. And then with Notts County hanging on for the final whistle, Bennett got in on their blind side and ended an eventful afternoon with a personal triumph. The score at the final whistle, Notts County 3, Charlton Athletic 3. Three days later, the battle-weary Charlton side were entertaining Bristol City with an evening game at the Valley. Munro with the free kick for the visitors. Chapel gets the ball away. Back it comes from Harriet, and now Junior Bent turning well, and there's a chance, and there's a goal! Scott Partridge scores his fourth goal in as many games. Deep into the City penalty area, Lee Burns up there, chance now for Nelson, oh, fine goal! Gary Nelson on the volley with his 14th of the season, and that's an immediate response to Bristol City taking the lead. Lee Burn was causing problems with his height and strength yet again, and Nelson turned and volleyed the ball beautifully past Welsh. It's one apiece. And now let's see what Charlton can do with this free kick early in the second half. Chipped in towards the far post. Chappell's in there. Oh, he's got a head to it, and it's there. Phil Chappell, his fifth goal of the season, just squeeze it in at the near post. Possibly the goalkeeper at fault, I thought, there. But Chappell getting up very well at the, far po at the near post there and squeezing the ball past Welsh. And Charlton managed to keep the ball in. Robinson. And now Nelson. The ball across. Oh, it's an own goal! Martin Scott makes it 3-1 to Charlton 
I'm sure Lee Byrne could probably have tucked the chance in at the far post anyway, but it's an unfortunate own goal from Martin Scott. Nelson turned the ball across, Scott put it through his own goal. Charlton Athletic 3, Bristol City 1. The Addicts' final game of the 93-94 campaign was on Sunday, May the 8th, at home to Middlesbrough. Ball in from Fleming. Oh, right the way across the face of the goal, and Wilkinson taps it in at the far post, and Middlesbrough lead within a minute. Oh, it's a good ball from Pete Bennett, missed it. And danger here, Tommy Wright and Hendry. Oh, it's a simple goal for John Hendry. And Middlesbrough two in front, and Charlton defence really sliced apart there. Bennett with a good challenge. And the ball out to the left-hand side, and here's Leeburn. And now a chance for Charlton, he's whipped the ball back. Chance for Walsh! And Colin Walsh scores against his former club to pull the score back to 2-1. A neatly worked goal from Charlton. Bennett found Leeburn. Leeburn pulled the ball back neatly for Colin Walsh and Walsh's left foot made no mistake from nine yards. And again, Chapel finding number two, Mickey Bennett. Another long ball forward from Bennett. Oh, Nelson's in here. Gary Nelson. Fine goal. Gary Nelson with his 15th of the season levels the scores here at the Valley. A mistake there from the Middlesbrough defender. Nelson whipped it off his toes and made no mistake beating Steve Pears in a similar spot to where Walsh found the net. It's two apiece at the Valley. Tommy Wright with the corner for Middlesbrough. Wilkinson's up there. Oh, there's a man offside, surely. Hendry has scored, but Jamie Pollock is on the goal line and the Charlton players are protesting. But the referee and the linesman have gone back to the centre circle. And here's Pollock, the driving force behind Middlesbrough this afternoon, finding Hendry. Hendry with the shots. Oh, and that's his hat trick. John Hendry neatly slides the ball past John Vaughan, and Middlesbrough have wrapped it up here at the Valley. It's a meaningless match, perhaps, for both clubs in terms of points of position, but John Hendry won't forget it. He's got a hat trick. peak again chance now for Jamie Pollock is this five it is sadly the results seem to sum up Charlton's disappointing latter part of the season with the final score Charlton Athletic 2 Middlesbrough 5 the Addicts final position in the first division table reflected the club's dismal run during the final weeks of the season with the side finishing in 11th place with 65 points to add to Charlton's misery, the club's arch-rivals Crystal Palace romped home with the Division 1 title, while Notts Forest also returned to the Premiership with automatic promotion. This summer, we've once again teamed up with the club to run our fabulous Charlton Athletic Goal of the Season competition. To be in the running for our fantastic prize, all you have to do is pick your top three goals from the following selection of superlative soccer. <laughs>
Simon and Tyne's got a right foot drive. Yes, what a goal! On the overlap now to down to get the cross in. He's got the ball, he's got the cross in the far post. There's Lieberman! Yes! 4 1. Classic Charlton goal. To make the choice easier for you, we've whittled the goals down to a short list of six. 
write your three favorites on a postcard in order of preference and send them to goals competition care of Steve Dixon Charlton Athletic FC the Valley Floyd Road London SE 7 8 BL the first entry picked out of the hat to match that of co-managers Alan Kerbishley and Steve Grit will win an exclusive VIP day out for two to a Charlton home match along with a year's subscription to the moving magazine. You'll also have an opportunity to present a trophy to the scorer of this year's top goal. Although Charlton's campaign fell apart at the seams during the final weeks of the season, Addicts fans will be able to console themselves by reflecting back on some of the happier moments from the last nine months. The club's sustained spell in the upper echelons of the table. The historic trips to Brescia and Ancona in the Anglo-Italian Cup. And of course, the thrill of knocking Blackburn Rovers out of the FA Cup. In addition, this season has seen the club consolidate their return to SE7 with the opening of a splendid new all-seater stand. Now that the Valley has supporters on all four sides of the ground, maybe next year Charlton fans will be able to cheer their side on to greater success, including perhaps the ultimate goal of promotion. Till next season, farewell from all of us on the program.